Hello, welcome to the second podcast for Mental Health Month here at PSBA. Last week, we discussed the growing awareness of mental health after lockdown began, which could be attributed to the popularity of social media platforms. So today, we are going to look at one of the long-standing mental health topics on social media, positivity. I have heard and seen many people talking about positivity, how thinking positive can help to overcome problems. Like you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. However, while positive framing can be a helpful tool in handling certain difficult situations, when used excessively or as a blanket rule for every and all situations, it can backfire. Toxic positivity is the denial or suppression of emotions that are considered to be negative or unpleasant. Lately, there have been more discussions over how excessive positivity may result in an isolating experience because people feel that if they try to talk about their negative emotions or thoughts, they are quickly shut down. So today, we have invited our PSBA community to share what they think of positivity or toxic positivity. Without further ado, let's begin with the first question. What do you think of this positivity movement? Okay, I think in general, making the best out of a bad situation is good. And uh, quote, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I think it's true, but only to a certain extent. Now, um, making the best out of your current situation tends to shift your focus away from the negative to the positive. And if we choose to see the silver linings and be thankful for what we have, uh, we will generally, generally feel happier. I think positivity is helpful as long as it is not extreme. It is a healthy mindset to adopt. Now, what I mean by extreme is to be at either extreme ends of the spectrum of being positive and negative. By trying hard, and I mean by consciously exerting yourself to be positive, by ignoring what really is going wrong can make you delusional and disconnected from reality. On the other hand, being negative can also put you in a dark place where it can be difficult to get out of. Now, I'm not saying that being negative is something that you do out of your own choice. Sometimes we really have no choice. My take on accounts using hashtags like good vibes only portray the unrealistic side of life that there can only be positivity in life. Personally, I have been told countless of times to just be positive in situations that feel like there are no positive side to things. It created this false perception that I'm not allowed to feel whatever negative emotions I'm experiencing and it made me feel so isolated. It created this distorted thinking pattern that I am the cause of the problem by thinking negatively and this mindset carried on with me now that I'm older to the point where whenever something bad happens, I believed I was a problem because I refused to think positively. If only it was as easy as thinking positively to solve the problems I have. It's not healthy to pretend that negativity and bad feelings or emotions don't exist. According to this good wives only, ideas showing down feelings we consider unhealthy to ignore them or to pretend they are not happening is it just bad for us is downright toxic. The truth is that people have a huge range of feelings and emotions and each of those is very important for us to experience. Our emotions are an important part of who you are as a person and just because something feels negative or unpleasant does not mean it should be ignored. It is important to realize that being human is to have good days and bad days, good feelings and bad feelings. To be human is to experience all of that. Just because we talk about unhappy things does not make us an unhappy person. You can still be a happy person that talks about unhappy things. There's this piece of research that really made me reconsider how we look at happiness as a life goal. Mouse and a group of researchers, they found that people who make happiness a goal were actually less happy over time. Because they theorized that chasing happiness might paradoxically be a stressor. Because when you feel anything but happiness, it is seen as a failure to reach the goal. So that may be something worth thinking about. The second question, do you think the positivity movement has been more helpful or harmful? I think that instead of being helpful, it has the opposite effect on the person hearing those words because the person in distress would feel afraid to open up, fearing that people would think that they are the problem due to their negative mindset. In my case, I spiraled further into depression, resulting in many suicidal attempts due to the loneliness I felt, thinking that nobody understood how I felt. I learned about 
toxic positivity after meeting people who were willing to open up about their experience in group therapy, which really shocked me, because it was always a hush-hush topic to talk about your problems. Of course, they never went through the exact same situation, but I realised that it's far more common for people to face difficulties in life. After learning that it's okay not to be okay and to validate my own feelings, I managed to be functional again, and it feels great. To know that there are other people out there who also feel bad in terrible situations, I don't blame myself entirely for how I feel anymore. I also label and recognize the emotions I have to understand why I am feeling this way. I feel less lonely and somewhat understood now. And now, I'm more assured in facing the tough times because other people struggle with it too. It's not just a problem that I have or created for myself. Toxic positivity is not healthy because it is a form of avoidance coping mechanism. When we tell other people to just be positive, what we are saying is that we don't want to deal with your negativity, even if that's how you're really feeling. We are avoiding finding out what the root of the problem is, we just want to make the symptoms go away. And why is this a problem? Because while we may try to sweep this problem under the rug, it will come back to haunt us because we are not learning the proper skills to handle difficult emotions and difficult situations. You will not just meet one or two difficult situations in your life. You will meet plenty throughout your life. How long can we avoid dealing with difficult emotions or uncomfortable feelings? You know, when we try to help somebody be positive, so to say, um, I think then your way of squeezing lemons to make lemonade might not be the same for another person, although the circumstances may appear similar. Now, um... I think if you're trying to encourage someone, listening plays a more important role than sharing. So I think it's more important to be wary and sensitive uh, of the other, per- the other party's reactions, you know, really see their expressions and only share when you think it is appropriate because sometimes um, it will just make the situation worse. Third question, have you encountered examples of toxic positivity? A personal example would be me being very busy with internship, work and studies and my mom till today still tells me that it's good that I'm busy and that I should just think positively and it'll all be over. So initially, I felt like nobody understood my stress with so much work to be done and maybe the feelings I felt weren't warranted. But what I do now, every time I hear those words, is to always assure myself that it's normal to feel this way, and if people ended up in my situation, they would feel the same way. Some days, it's hard to believe it's because other people make it seem like my problems are too trivial, but I still repeat my affirmations to myself even if I don't believe it. They are important benefits to experiencing negative emotions. For example, fear is a negative emotion but it helps to keep us safe. When we are afraid, we tend to avoid the situation because fear is signaling to us that there is a potential danger coming our way. So we need to feel fear to know where danger is and to want us to stay away. If we were to dismiss that fear and replace with positive thinking or positive feelings, we might be making a mistake because we just walked into a potentially dangerous situation. Ignoring our negative feelings will only hurt us because we won't be able to make good decisions. We can advise something that is as natural as having emotion as well. So it is not a good idea to only have positivity. That is a very good point. The problem with excessive positivity is that we are not recognizing all of our emotions. We just want to recognize the positive ones. But our emotions actually serve a greater purpose. They signal what is important to us, our values, our priorities. So for example, if you feel frustrated because your friend always takes a long time to reply to your messages, maybe it is signaling that you take communication seriously, that you take your friendship seriously, and your emotions are signaling that to you. So the issue of toxic positivity is that it is suggesting we should only have positive emotions and not negative emotions, but all of our emotions are useful and they are functional and they are all signals to tell us what we need to pay more attention to. So, okay, so what are some of the examples of toxic positivity? Thankfully, I didn't encounter this very much, uh, but I can understand how it feels to have your true feelings invalidated. Uh, I'm not saying that these people do it intentionally, probably not, 
uh, it's just that they are less conscious about what they say, what they do, uh, that affects the other party adversely. I want to say that it's okay to feel sad. It is okay to be negative. And I think it's, in fact, essential in helping us to adapt, grow, and empathize with others. In conclusion, positivity is a powerful thing uh, as long as it is not extreme. Negativity is uh, just as essential as long as it is managed. Yes, positivity can be a helpful tool in helping us manage certain difficult situations that we come across. Sometimes we get so caught up in all the bad news that we neglect to see the good side of things, and we could do with a little reminder. But sometimes we do see the good side of things, but bad news is really, really bad that the good just doesn't seem to matter. The constant advice of thinking positive places unreasonable pressure on us because it perpetuates a narrative that it's all in our head and if we just change our thinking, the problem will magically go away. But sometimes that's just not true. Not everything can be wished away with positive thinking and not everything is within our control. If a person is feeling terrible, they are feeling guilty or depressed or angry or frustrated, that is their emotional reality and we... As outsiders, we are not in a position to say that they should be feeling something else instead. What we can offer is to see if we can help to figure out what is causing those emotions, what is causing this grief or that frustration or that guilt. If we can find the root of the problem, then only can we begin to troubleshoot the problem at hand meaningfully. Well guys, with that, we have come to the end of the second and last podcast for Mental Health Man. A very, very, very big thank you to everyone who supported this podcast one way or the other, especially those who actually who took the time and effort to you know, give their thoughts on the topics. And for everyone who listened to the podcast, thank you as well. I've received so many encouraging notes and their messages about the Mental Health Month campaign, and I cannot be happier that this has been relevant and helpful for you guys. We still have a couple of things to share with you this month, so follow us on Instagram at PSB Student Life to see what we have for you next Monday. Bye!